Have you ever wondered what happens when big tech decides you're no longer welcome? Let's delve into a world where you're digitally exiled, a phenomenon known as de-platforming. De-platforming is when tech giants remove individuals or organizations from their platforms, effectively silencing them. But it doesn't stop there. Imagine your bank account being closed without your consent. This is known as debanking, a tactic used to cut off financial resources. And then we have demonetization, where content creators are stripped of their ability to earn revenue from their work. Big tech companies hold an extraordinary amount of power in our society. They control the platforms we use to express our thoughts, the algorithms that decide what we see, and the financial systems that drive our online economy. Big tech has the power to silence voices, but what happens when they misuse this power? Stay with us as we explore the impact of these actions on our civil liberties and human rights. Let's dive into the case of Alex Jones and Infowars. Alex Jones, a controversial figure known for his conspiracy theories and boisterous personality, headed Infowars, a media platform that attracted millions of listeners and viewers across the globe. Infowars was a powerhouse in the alternative media landscape with its reach extending far and wide. However, in a swift and coordinated action, Alex Jones and Infowars were deplatformed from several major social media platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Spotify. This deplatforming was due to alleged violations of community standards, with the platform citing hate speech, harassment, and the spread of false information as reasons for the ban. The removal of Infowars from these platforms was swift and left little room for appeal. This had a profound impact on the reach and revenue of Infowars. Prior to the deplatforming, Infowars had millions of followers across these platforms. The Infowars website was a bustling hub of activity, with daily news articles, videos, podcasts, and a thriving online store. The deplatforming led to a drastic reduction in audience reach. With fewer platforms to disseminate their content, Infowars' influence waned. The impact on revenue was equally significant. Infowars relied heavily on ad revenue and product sales from their online store. With the deplatforming, ad revenue plummeted as advertisers pulled out and the audience for their online store shrank dramatically. Although Infowars attempted to circumvent the deplatforming by creating new accounts and platforms, these efforts were largely unsuccessful. The case of Alex Jones and Infowars is a clear example of how deplatforming can drastically reduce the reach and revenue of an individual or organization. It illustrates the power that social media platforms wield in shaping public discourse and the potential consequences when they decide to remove certain voices from their platforms. The case of Infowars shows us how deplatforming can shrink an individual or organization's reach almost overnight. But it's not just social media platforms involved, let's take a look at Patreon and MasterCard. Patreon, a platform that allows creators to receive funding directly from their fans or patrons, and MasterCard, a global financial services corporation, have both come under scrutiny for their roles in debanking. Debanking, for those unfamiliar with the term, is the practice of denying individuals access to banking and financial services based on their political views or affiliations. This is a concerning development because it's not about a tweet or a post being taken down. It's about individuals being denied access to their livelihoods. Imagine being an artist, a writer, or a content creator, and suddenly finding out that the platform you relied on for income has kicked you off, not because you violated any rules of the platform, but because of your political beliefs. To put it into perspective, it's like being told you're no longer allowed to use money because someone doesn't agree with your viewpoint. This extends beyond freedom of speech. It's about the right to participate in society, to earn a living, and to have access to basic financial services. Reports have emerged of individuals who have been debanked by Patreon and MasterCard, causing not just a loss of current income but also casting a shadow on their ability to generate future income. This is because once you've been debanked, it can be incredibly difficult to find another platform willing to risk associating with you. The power to influence who gets to participate in the economy should not be in the hands of a few corporations. It's a dangerous precedent, and it's happening under our noses without sufficient scrutiny or debate. It's a form of financial censorship, and it's an issue that requires urgent attention. The consequences of this kind of financial deplatforming can be financially devastating. It can mean the difference between making a living and facing financial ruin. It's not just a matter of freedom of speech, it's a matter of financial survival. 
When financial institutions get involved, the consequences can be financially devastating. And then there's demonetization. Let's talk about YouTube. YouTube, the world's largest video sharing platform, has been a beacon of free speech and a hub for content creators for over a decade. It's a place where anyone with a camera and an idea can make their voice heard. But there's a catch. The not-so-glamorous side of YouTube lies in its demonetization policies. Demonetization, in essence, is when YouTube decides that a video isn't advertiser-friendly. This can happen for a variety of reasons. Maybe the content is too controversial, or it violates YouTube's community guidelines. Whatever the case, when a video is demonetized, it's stripped of its ability to earn ad revenue. That's right, no more money from those pesky pre-roll ads, mid-video interruptions, or banner ads. For many content creators, ad revenue is a significant part of their income. It's what allows them to create content full-time, to invest in better equipment, or hire a team. When a video is demonetized, it's not just a slap on the wrist, it's a direct hit to the creator's pocketbook. But it's not only about the money. Demonetization also affects the production of content. When creators are constantly worried about whether their next video will be demonetized, they often find themselves self-censoring. They might shy away from certain topics, or alter their content to fit into YouTube's narrow definition of what's considered advertiser-friendly. This can limit the diversity and richness of content available on the platform. It's also worth noting that YouTube's demonetization policies are often criticized for their lack of transparency. Creators are sometimes left in the dark, unsure of why their content was demonetized, or how to prevent it from happening in the future. This uncertainty can lead to frustration and even discourage some from creating content altogether. In conclusion, while YouTube provides a platform for millions of creators to share their work, its demonetization policies can have a profound impact on these creators. The loss of ad revenue can be a significant financial blow, and the fear of demonetization can stifle creativity and lead to self-censorship. Demonetization can effectively end a creator's career. So, what does all this mean for human rights? Well, at the heart of all these practices, we find a direct impact on our most basic human rights. The right to freedom of speech, for instance, is being challenged. Social media platforms have become the new town squares, where people gather to exchange ideas, debate, and learn. However, when these platforms start censoring or deplatforming individuals based on their views, we see a direct infringement on the right to free speech. The lack of transparency and accountability in the enforcement of community standards by social media platforms is a significant threat to free speech. This is not just about the right to speak out but also the right to hear diverse perspectives, which is essential for a functioning democracy. In addition, we see an impact on people's economic rights. When payment processors like MasterCard or platforms like Patreon start debanking or demonetizing individuals, they are effectively cutting off their livelihoods. This is especially concerning in the digital age, where many people earn their living online. These practices are a form of economic censorship. By controlling who can make a living online, these companies are exerting an enormous amount of power over people's economic rights. Moreover, the arbitrary and opaque nature of these decisions raises serious concerns about due process, another fundamental human right. Many people who have been deplatformed or demonetized often don't know why it happened or how to appeal the decision. This lack of due process is a violation of their rights and is deeply concerning in a society that values justice and fairness. In conclusion, the rise of deplatforming, debanking, and demonetization practices by big tech and financial companies has far reaching implications for human rights. They are not just a threat to freedom of speech and economic rights but also to the principles of due process and thus, the foundations of a democratic society. The impact on human rights is clear and concerning. So, what can we do about it, you ask? Well, there is no magic bullet, but there are several ways to make a difference. First, consider supporting creators who've been negatively impacted by deplatforming, debanking, and demonetization. They're often making meaningful and important content, and your support can keep them going. This could be in the form of financial contributions, sharing their work, or simply sending a word of encouragement. Second, advocate for policy change. Reach out to your representatives, write letters, or join protests. Advocate for laws that ensure a fair and open internet and protect the rights of individuals to express their views. Lastly, spread awareness. Talk about these issues with your friends, family, and colleagues, post about them on social media, 
write about them in blogs or opinion pieces. Knowledge is power, and the more people know about these issues, the more pressure there will be to address them. Change starts with awareness. Share this video, start a conversation, make a stand against deplatforming, debanking, and demonetization. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.